Hey everybody, welcome back to our Passion Week devotion series. Uh, today is Wednesday of Passion Week, and, and typically Wednesday is kind of the silent day, and uh, I, want to, I want to tell you a couple things that are going on uh, kind of today, possibly today. Um, one of them was that, that Judas is about to betray Jesus. He's about to go and make a deal with the uh, chief priests and the scribes uh, in exchange for, for 30 pieces of silver to betray Jesus into their hands. Um, and, and, but I want to provide a little background for that. So uh, in, in the accounts, as you're looking at the accounts of Passion Week and going through the Gospels, uh, in, in John, what you see is the account I'm going to read in a minute uh, is actually taking place the day before the triumphant entry. So uh, this doesn't fit chronologically, but it gives us a background and provides us a background with what, what was going on with Judas. Because the other Gospels, while they don't timestamp it, they have it situated uh, kind of in that Wednesday activities, right after Tuesday in that Wednesday activity. So that's what we're going to find today is, is Judas uh, goes to make a deal with the chief priest. So here, here's that passage, and we're looking there uh, out, of, out of Luke chapter 22. Remember, Jesus has has come into town. He, is, he has made some uh, some ripples and waves, and, and there was no turning back for him. Uh, and, and what we see happen uh, is, again, Judas is getting fed up with it, and the chief priests are, so they're going to make this deal. Uh, and it said in Luke 22, 1 through 6, it says, uh, the festival of unleavened bread, which is called the Passover, was approaching. And the chief priests and scribes were looking for a way to put him to death because they were afraid of the people. Satan entered Judas, called Iscariot, who was numbered among the twelve. And he went away and discussed with the chief priests and the temple police how he could hand him over to them. Uh, they were glad and agreed to give him silver. So he accepted the offer and started looking for a good opportunity to betray him when the crowd was not present. Now, obviously, uh, Judas is not a man of God. He was he was with Jesus, but he was the one that would betray Jesus. And and I want to provide a little background of, of what, what started this in, in Judas' heart, at least on during Passion Week. Of course, before that, in the three years preceding this, uh, Judas had all kinds of interactions with Jesus and, and probably some disdain in his heart for him as well. But we see here in, in John chapter 12, uh, verses 1 through 8, we see that a background story, again, time-stamped, before the triumphant entry. So this is what happened a few days earlier before Palm Sunday. It says six days before the Passover, Judas came to Bethany uh, where Lazarus was uh, and, and, the one, and he was the one that Jesus raised from the dead. So they gave a dinner for, uh, for him there. Martha was serving them and Lazarus was one of those reclining with him at the table. Now they're actually at Simon the leper's house uh, on that day. And then Mary took a pound of perfume, pure and expensive nard, anointed Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. So the house was filled with the fragrance of perfume. Then one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was about to betray him said, why wasn't this perfume sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? He didn't, he didn't say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He was in charge of the money bag and would steal part of it, uh, part of what was put in it. And Jesus answered, leave her alone. She has kept it uh, for the day of my burial. For you always have the poor with you, but you don't always have me. And, and the question here we see with Judas, what we should ask ourselves is, what do we value? Uh, Judas valued money. He, he valued esteem. He valued power or prestige or property or whatever it might have been. Uh, and he was willing to steal from the money pouch uh, that was Jesus. That was, that was God's money. Uh, he, was all, he, was, he was upset when people wasted money that really he couldn't get a cut of it now, right? Uh, it should have been sold and given to the poor, really. It should have been sold and put in the money bag. And Jesus, or Judas wanted a cut of his money. So he was he was upset with that. And, and that's when he left and decided, I'm going to go talk to the chief priest. Uh, I'm done with this. I'm going to betray him. And maybe they'll give me money, give me what I deserve. So he didn't value Jesus. But here's what's neat about Mary. As she goes and, and um, puts this expensive perfume on Jesus. Uh, and, and yeah, it seems like a waste. But what it shows is what she valued. See, this was an expensive perfume, and it cost a lot of money. Uh, it, it could, and she'd been saving it for years, Scripture tells us. But when she went to Jesus and anointed Jesus with it, what she said is, I value Jesus more. See, she understood the value of what Jesus brought to the table. She understood the value of what Jesus was bringing with his life. And if you and I understand the value of what Jesus brings with his life and with his death, then we would esteem to value him more and not our stuff or not our money, but we would give whatever we had to serve and love and follow Jesus Christ. So I hope you, you can question in your own heart, what are you valuing? And I hope the answer is Jesus. God bless you guys. We'll see you tomorrow.